All right, good morning. So, uh, my slides, as always with most of my talks, are online. They're at talks.php.net. You can follow along. My Twitter is at Rasmus. So, let's see. I get my clicker with me. Ah, go. Uh -huh. I got it. Okay. So, I've been doing this for a very long time now. Um, a lot longer than most of you in here, I think. There are a few older folks I see. Um, but this was my first computer. It had 1K of memory. That big box at the back was this memory expansion that I got for it, which added 16K. I was amazed what I could do, suddenly going from 1K to 16K of memory in my computer. Except the box was so big and heavy that every now and then it would fall off. So suddenly my memory of my code that was running would drop from 17K down to 1K. So I learned to put my critical loop in the lower 1K and it would then sort of reset itself without crashing when I plugged my memory back in. Very strange way of, of programming, but that was how I started programming. Um, moved on to other computers back in the 80s. Remember my world changed when I bought myself a modem, 2400 baud Hayes modem, so I could connect to the world. This was probably 1985, 86, something like that. Um, this is what the web, if you will, looked like to me as a kid. Right? This was sitting there waiting for Z modem to download files over a 2400 baud modem. Took forever. So in the 90s, um, we didn't really have, I mean, we still didn't have the web. We had other things, we had Gopher which was basically sort of a text-based web only used at universities. Um, by 1993, the very first graphical web browser came out, Mosaic. And I remember seeing Mosaic for the very first time and going, yes, this, this, this is where we need to be. And that's when everything changed for me. And that's when I started working on PHP. I think it was like two weeks after I first started using Mosaic, I started working on PHP because I started building websites and all of my initial code for writing websites in C ended up going into the first version of PHP. This is what the web looked like, programming the web in 1993. This is a CGI program written in C and you can see it's it's pretty nasty looking. You have HTML embedded inside um, a C program. If you want to change anything, you'd have to recompile the C program and redeploy it to the web server. Not very nice to work with. The world moved on to Perl. So this is a CGI PM program, uh, so CGI Perl module. And to me, this didn't help very much. Instead of embedding your HTML in C, you're now embedding your HTML inside Perl. Not a big help as far as I was concerned. I wanted to separate the business logic from the look and feel and from the design, which some people might find a little bit ironic because PHP is pretty well known for mashing it together. That wasn't what I saw when I started PHP. People chose not to use PHP the way I had envisioned, which always happens when you build something. Nobody ever uses it the way you thought they would use it. And I'm sure you've all hit that. You build things, and then you get your parents to use it, and you say, what are you doing? You're not using it right. But it's, it's our failure as well of not building and making it clear. But anyway, I wanted to separate things out. I wanted my HTML to look like HTML, and I created a very simple templating system so I could put in a couple of fancy tags in my HTML to make backend calls into my business logic. The templating language was supposed to be just a very, very simple templating language and all the business logic was intended to be written in C. So a strongly typed compiled language suitable for writing complex business logic. And this was just the presentation layer. However, the world didn't agree with me, and the web was growing so fast in the mid-90s, there weren't enough C developers in the world to meet the need of this exploding World Wide Web. And people saw this templating system I had built, 
I said, hey, that's cool. I see you have a little guest book with a database on the back end. You have other examples of how they use it. Great, but now we need more things. Could you add loops? Okay, I guess in a templating system, it makes sense to have a loop if you want to loop through and put the same template tag many times. All right, I can add loops. It's like, well, what about function calls? Why can't we group all our templates in a, in a function and call that function? Okay, I guess that makes sense in the templating language as well. And I said, well, how about recursion? If we have some kind of expanding tree or something, we need to call our functions recursively. Okay, I can see how that makes sense from a sort of a visual design perspective. And I kept adding more and more and more things to the templating system to the point where it became a, a language. And instead of just doing the presentation layer in the templating system, people started writing their business logic in the presentation system. And then some idiot wrote a templating system for my templating system. You may have heard of Smarty, right? And I was like, oh, man. And that's when I knew I had completely failed. Because once you start templating the templating system, it's, it's all lost. But that's kind of where PHP came from. It was this constant battle I had trying to convince people to write stuff in C and failing at every step along the way. So I gave up and said, okay, fine, let's just make the templating language better. Let's, let's agree with the world and say, okay, fine, we're going to write complex business logic in an untyped, kind of hokey templating language, since that's what people want. I'm like, great, let's do it. Um, and I spent a lot of time on the ecosystem, which I think is something people don't really realize. PHP didn't succeed because it's a great language, because it isn't a great language. I, it's pretty good now, but back then it was definitely not a good language. But it succeeded because I spent a lot of time making sure all the pieces fit so that you had an entire stack that would work. So Apache talked to PHP very well because you could embed PHP directly into Apache, and from a performance perspective, it was very, very quick to run mod PHP inside Apache. It integrated very well with MySQL and other databases, because I spent a lot of time on that interaction there. So for Apache, I wrote a bunch of Apache code to make it work. For MySQL, I was actually using a database before that called MSQL or MiniSQL. And I added something called the limit clause to that database, because for web applications, it was very important to be able to limit the number of rows that would come across on the query. And this MiniSQL database didn't have that, and it didn't have cursors. So I added limit. When MySQL came around, um, they, wanted to, they wanted to be the, the web database. So they asked me, hey, how, how can we get you to support MySQL and PHP? It's like, well, make it easy for me to connect to it and link to it. And I said, great, we, we, we have already done that. We have copied the mini SQL API that you're currently using. All you have to do is a search and replace in your text editor. So instead of MSQL, just change all your calls to MySQL, and it should just work. He's like, okay, but what about my queries? I added this limit clause. He's like, really? Okay, we'll add that. So that's how the limit clause came to be in MySQL and other databases afterwards, because other databases came along and said, hey, this web thing is cool. Everyone is using this weird limit clause. We better add it, too. Um, so if you've ever used, even if you hate PHP, if you've ever used the limit clause in any SQL queries, you're still using PHP tech, essentially, because it came out of that project. Um, so anyway, enough history. We're on PHP 7. PHP 7 was a huge step performance-wise. It was motivated by Facebook a little bit, because Facebook, with their HHVM, showed what could be done with a JIT, and they, they were two to three times faster than PHP 5 with HHVM. I was like, holy smokes, this is, this is cool. Let's add a JIT to PHP, which we then did, and it didn't help at all. It's like, hmm, that's weird. We added this cool JIT. We can do fractals an order of magnitude faster, but WordPress doesn't run any faster. Why is that? Well, 
the way a JIT works, right, it looks for hot spots in your code and it can optimize that. But if your code is sort of broad and hits all kinds of things and lots of database calls, a JIT doesn't help very much. And the way PHP was architected, we were just moving too much memory around. And we were blowing our registers, you know, the int various Intel registers, we weren't dealing with them efficiently. So the JIT just didn't help us. And we took a step back and said, OK, why doesn't it help? Well, because of memory issues, let's clean up memory management in PHP. So we spent about a year and a bit cleaning up all the memory management and optimizing the crap out of everything. And the result of just the memory optimization without the JIT was basically we doubled or even more um, the performance of PHP by optimizing memory. We still don't have a JIT. We might add a JIT, maybe PHP 8, we'll see how that goes. Um, PHP 7 is still JITless. But we decreased the overall amount of data that we're shuffling around within the application. Um, much better data locality, so the right data in the right spot at the right time um, without copying anything. And um, just an example. So here, the ZVAL. ZVAL is the basic sort of data type underneath everything in PHP. So if you have a variable, it's a ZVAL, which is basically a union. And if it's a string, an int, or, what, or a float, um, it gets the right union type in this ZVAL, but it's stored in this ZVAL. And we reduce the size of the basic ZVAL from 24 down to 16 bytes, which doesn't sound like much. But when you have tens of thousands of these in your program, it adds up. Hash table size and everything, and also various little hacks. So that example you see there, which is 100,000 elements, and each element is a small array. In PHP 5, that took about 109 megabytes of memory. In PHP 7, with opcache enabled, drops down to six megabytes of memory, right? That's a huge reduction when you go from over 100 megabytes down to six. And performance-wise, it means that we're shuffling so much less data around, the performance shot up because of that. All kinds of other optimizations along the way as well. Um, still plans for a JIT eventually, we'll see. It's really hard to write even a bad JIT. It's almost impossible to write a great JIT. Um, but I'm still hopeful. So the actual effect of this, so here's running, hitting WordPress, so one post, so basically a post page on WordPress. Uh, in PHP 5.3, um, which came out in 2009, we could get about 150 some requests per second out of it. Now in PHP 7.2, we're up to 540. So basically a 4x increase, which is crazy. And if we look at latency, so here's latency on 10 concurrent requests. So it dropped from 70 milliseconds down to 20 milliseconds of latency on, on that page, which is a massive thing. The FDO that you see there that helps a little bit, um, this is called feedback directed optimization. You, you can get about a five, six percent boost by using FDO. So if you are sort of a single stack company, you use Laravel or you use WordPress or some one application that runs your entire system, you can optimize PHP for that specific type of code using FDO. So in PHP 7, there's a special flag called profgen. So you can recompile PHP, say make profgen, and it generates a profiling version of PHP. Then you can train your PHP on your specific code. A good way of doing that is to use PHP CGI minus capital T, which says run this a thousand times, and point it to various pages in your code. Because of the way WordPress works, just the front page loads in basically all of WordPress. So in this case, I just hit the front page, but you can hit other entry points as well. So after hitting the front page a thousand times, I've now trained PHP. I can say make prof clean and prof, make prof use. 
which basically builds a PHP using the profiling data that we collected. And this resulting PHP will now run WordPress five to six percent faster than a vanilla PHP. It might run other things a little bit slower because this has now been optimized specifically for WordPress. But five to six percent is still cool. Even more important than straight memory or straight performance is the reduction in memory usage, especially if you're hosted in the cloud. Your instances can be a lot smaller or you can put way, way more traffic to the existing instances that you have. So the memory use for WordPress 4.3 and PHP 5.3 was about 140 megabytes of memory required to run WordPress, which is a little bit crazy. That has dropped from 140 megabytes down to 15 megabytes for running the exact same code. Which means so that the request density of servers is way, way higher with PHP 7. You can shove much more traffic against much smaller instances if you switch to PHP 7. So if you're still running PHP 5 with your stuff, you're kind of lucky because you can get this amazing performance boost simply by upgrading. And it isn't that hard to upgrade. I did this at the company I work for, which is Etsy. Etsy in New York. And this is a graph of uh, you know, our P95 response time, so latency in milliseconds. The fire colors here is a PHP 5.5 server, two PHP 5.5 servers, and this is a PHP 7.0 server at the time. And the latency dropped from about 400 milliseconds, or 400 and some, 460 down to 260. So about a 200 millisecond drop in latency. Um, CPU use, so this is CPU time spent, dropped as well, basically in half. And memory usage from about 80 megs down to 16 or so, or 12. So a huge drop in memory as well. And it was very interesting because when I did this upgrade, I wanted to push it and I started turning off production servers. And I started by turning off half the production servers. And the operations people said, whoa, 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 whoa what's happening? Half our servers are offline. So relax, it's okay. And I started turning off more and more and more servers. And the operations folks got more and more concerned that I was turning off all of Etsy, essentially. And I had it down to the point where I had turned off two-thirds of all the servers when the ops people just said, okay, stop. This is, don't go any further. This is too risky. Um, but essentially, I'm able to turn off two-thirds of all our production servers because of this upgrade to PHP 7. Now, there are other effects of doing that. We have about two billion sites that run the web today, um, which is on about 10 million physical machines all over the world. And PHP conservatively is on 50% of those machines. Our adoption isn't high yet. We're in the five to six, perhaps 7% range these days of all the PHP servers out there running PHP 7. I really, really am trying to change that with talks like this and encouraging people and showing the effects. So please, if you're still running stuff on PHP 5, please upgrade. If for no other reason, for this, right? If you look at the amount of energy, electricity that you use on these servers and the amount of CO2 that that generates varies a little bit by country, of course, depending on how you get your electricity. But at least in the United States, at 5% adoption, we saved about $200 million in electricity costs and spat out 375 million kilograms less CO2 just with 5% adoption. If we get that to 100%, it makes a huge difference. Of course, that doesn't quite take into account you, the programmers. When you see faster servers and, and more memory efficient things, you throw more features at it, right? So you're not just going to speed up PHP. You're going to slow it back down by mashing tons of features on top of it. But 
that's the other thing that PHP 7, 7 gives you. It's the headroom. It's the headroom to add all these features that in the past you couldn't do because it was just too slow. Now you can. I've seen people write um, like Nintendo 64 emulators all in PHP. And you can actually play Nintendo games quite well in PHP 7 because of how fast it is. So please, do your part. Upgrade to PHP 7. All right. Slightly more technical. Let's talk a bit about new things in PHP 7.2, which is the current stable version. If you're going to upgrade today, PHP 7.2 should be the version that you upgrade to. One of the things we've started working on is something called DCE, which stands for Dead Code Elimination, and SCCP, which is Spart Sparse Constant. Um, um, I'll, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, other features, kind of a minor one, parameter type widening. This just means that you can widen the type in a child class. So when you're extending the parent, the function signature doesn't have to exactly match. It has to be compatible, so you can't restrict it, but you can widen a bit and allow more things as long as it's still compatible with the original. Um, next. Trailing commas are allowed everywhere now. There was a few places where you could use trailing commas, so the comma with nothing after it. Now, anywhere where you have a list separated by commas, you can have a trailing comma. So a few examples are here. There's now an object type hint. So if you know something takes an object and you don't care which one, it could be for some kind of serialization or encoding function, for example. Or if something returns an object, but you don't know which one, um, you can still type hint it to say it's an object. We're finally deprecating unquoted strings. Um, previously, if it wasn't a constant and you put a string in, it would basically think, it would basically just think, hey, you forgot to add quotes, which was a silly, silly way of doing things. This is now being deprecated. So you get a warning in PHP 7.2 and it'll be completely gone in a future version, version 8 probably. It's a way to add extra headers in an array for the mail command, minor feature. Um, there's a new argon2i password hash, hash mechanism, um, hashing function. And we've also switched to the Sodium crypto library. Up until now, we've been using a library called mcrypt, but mcrypt hasn't been maintained for the past eight or so years. And using an unmaintained crypto library is a really bad idea. So we've now switched everything over to using libsodium. And there's a really good reference. If you're interested in crypto, and you, or you need to migrate some stuff from mcrypt to sodium, this URL here is a really good reference on all the things libsodium can do and how to do them with tons of examples. And it's a very good read if you're into this stuff. So if you are upgrading, um, if you're operating from an earlier version of PHP 7, there are a few things that might break, but it's a very short list. One of the things is mcrypt. So in PHP 7.1, um, we were putting out warnings saying, hey, you're using mcrypt. This is going to go away soon. In PHP 7.2, it's gone. So you're going to have to fix your mcrypt calls. Most of the time, it's pretty easy to do. Just go look up the actual call itself, and you'll see, if you go to the Paragon stuff or the Libsodium, you'll see an equivalent sodium call. It should take you less than 10 minutes to fix your mcrypt stuff. We've also gotten rid of the autoload function. Just use SPL autoload register instead. Again, simple search and replace. You just typically only call that function once anywhere in the project, so that shouldn't take you long to fix. Create function is gone, use anonymous functions now. And each is gone, well, it's deprecated. It, it will it'll still work, but it'll warn you. And read exif data, it was an alias. We're getting rid of the aliases for some of these weird functions just to reduce the number of functions in the global table. 
as always, we have upgrading docs from all the different versions. If you're still on PHP 5, start by reading the PHP 7.0 upgrading doc, and then go from there. There's a 7.1, a 7.2. Um, by the end of this year, we'll probably have 7.3 ready to go, but we're not quite there yet. If you're writing extensions for PHP, if you're still on PHP 5, you have a lot of work to do. Upgrading user space PHP code from 5 to 7 is really not that difficult. It might take you a weekend. Upgrading your extension, your C or C++ extension to support PHP 7 could take you a month. The underlying API has changed a lot. And you're probably going to need some help. So we have various mailing lists that you can find on the website for that. So a little more on DCE and the uh, sparse conditional constant propagation stuff we're doing now. <clears throat> we started down this path of optimizing PHP, and we've run out of all the really easy optimizations. So now we're getting into some of the more academic, traditional compiler optimizations. And some of this stuff I find really cool. It's, it's completely transparent to you, and you, you're not going to notice it, but some of the things I find cool are, are here. So here, for example, we have a function that says a equals one returns zero, right? This a equals one assignment doesn't do anything, right? Because you assign one to dollar a, but then you return right away. And because of the way variables work in PHP, if you haven't declared it as global, it's a function local variable. So it cannot escape. And that's where the escape analysis part comes in of these optimizations. We analyze the code and say, can this code escape in any way? Does it have any side effects, any possible side effects? And in this case, that A equals one has no side effects whatsoever. We can completely eliminate it. So if we dump out the opcodes, so the opcodes is kind of the machine language or the assembly language behind PHP. If we dump out the opcodes, we can see that in PHP 7.1, the opcodes for assigning one to variable A are still there, and then it returns zero. In PHP 7.2, that assignment has been completely eliminated. So the opcodes that get stored in shared memory, which is what runs on your production servers, doesn't even see that dollar $A equals one assignment anymore. It's completely gone. If we try to trick it, so here I've passed in four strings, I'm concatenating those four strings into $x. Then I wipe out my $x by assigning zero to it, and I return x. So I'm trying to see, hey, can I trick the, the optimizer? Because all this stuff, all these concatenations don't do anything because I wipe it out on the next line. So in PHP 7.1, we receive our four arguments. Um, then we concatenate our strings. So there's three concat calls. You can see there are three dots here. Each of those concat opcodes for each of those dots. Then we assign the result to x. Then we assign zero to x, and we return x. In PHP 7.2, we receive the four arguments because that's essentially a no op. That doesn't actually take any time at all. It's part of the function definition. But everything else has been wiped out. And even the variable x has been wiped out. It figured out that, hey, x can only ever be 0. So let's not even assign x. Let's just return 0. So it wiped out our entire function, essentially, and replaced it with return 0. So here, if we try to trick it again, we can see <clears throat> b equals a plus equals 3. This is actually valid PHP. You can assign multiple things on the same line like that. So I was trying to see, can I trick it to not eliminate dollar $B? And I couldn't. It still figured out that this <coughs> gets variable A, um, assigns 3 to A, and returns A, or adds 3 to A. So it eliminated dollar $B entirely. Um, oops. Sorry. There are some differences. We're making things better in PHP 7.3. So here's one where PHP 
I was able to trick it. I was able to um, give it a case where it couldn't optimize. In PHP 7.3, we have improved this quite a bit. And the DCE and SCCP optimizations are much, much better in PHP 7.3, which is coming out in a couple of months. Another instance in PHP 7.3 is that we now look up a level. So in this case, I have a class A and function foo. I instantiate A, I set property foo on A to X, and I return X. All this code reduces down to a function um, that just returns X. It eliminated the instantiation of class A because it looked at A and saw, hey, there's no constructor, there's no destructor, this class doesn't actually do anything, and this assigning a property doesn't affect it because the class is empty. Let's just eliminate that entire class instantiation. So you can go further, and we can test that. I can add a destructor. So in this case, I added the destructor. In this case, it didn't eliminate the class instantiation because we're not actually looking up two levels. In this case, if we looked up two levels, we could go into the destructor and see, hey, this destructor doesn't do anything useful. And we may do that at some point. We have to figure out how many le levels up is worthwhile going. But it gets really interesting, all the various ways um, you can try to eliminate people's code just by sort of analyzing and say, hey, this code is idiotic. Let's just delete it. So um, like here's a good example. You look at this, if x, right? So you pass in x, which is either true or false, and you either assign 0, 1 or 0, 2 arrays to dollar $A. And then you return the first element. Now when you read this and think about it, you will always get 0 back from this function because you're only returning the first element of the array, and it doesn't matter if x is true or false, right? You're always going to return 0. So in PHP 7.3, it's smart enough to figure that out, and all this stuff is eliminated, and the function just says return 0. Cool, right? Then you can go crazy. So here's a whole bunch of code that does all kinds of stuff, and in the end, what PHP 7.3 said was, I don't care about all that code. All this function does is echo 1, return 4. So it replaced all that code with basically a function that said echo 1, return 4. What this means is, if your code is really, really bad, it's going to run super, super fast in PHP 7.3. <coughs> And the, the worse your code is, the better the optimization. <laughs> so, so for those of you who write great, clean code, this isn't going to help you very much, right? Because if you don't write code like that, this optimization doesn't do anything. But you'd be surprised how much bad PHP code there is in the world. And you will be able to measure it. You basically, when you move from like PHP 7.1 to 7.3, the performance difference of the code will kind of be the, a, a score for how bad the code really is. <laughs> anyway, so um, I've been working on another tool called FAN, which does static analysis. And static analysis is something you run before deploying your code to your production servers to try to catch mistakes before it hits production. At Etsy, we run fan at, on every deploy. So before you can push your code out to the production servers, it has to pass through fan, and fan has to tell you, yes, I don't see any problems with this code. You can find it, GitHub fan fan. Very easy to install in your project. Just compose or require it. Um, you can create a configuration file. It can build one for you, fan minus minus init. It'll build a stub one. And then have a look at it. It's a very well-commented configuration file. 
and then just run vendor bin fan and it'll scan your, your project. Some of the things it does when it scans, it's a bit of a list here. I'll show you a few examples. Um, uh, you can also add plugins. But I think the best way to show you is with a little example. So here's some code. This code doesn't do much. Just an example of a, of a class C um, with a couple of methods, a constructor, a property. One of the ways that you can type hint fan is through PHP doc types. Same thing that PHP Storm uses to go beyond the type hints that PHP 7 supports natively. So in this case, I'm saying this property is an array with integer keys and string values. So this is the kind of thing in, in pure PHP you can't do, right? You can't type properties at all, actually. Um, and in other places, you don't have that granularity of saying the contents and the keys, what types they should be on an array. So, but in this case, we've typed the property. And I'm running fan in daemon mode right now on my laptop, which means it's listening in the background. So if I go down here and I screw up this thing, and I say, okay, I'm going to have a string key instead, and I try to save my file. And this is inside VI, right? So VI tells me, wait a second, and I get a fan error. It comes up and says, hey, you are assigning string string to property C-A-R-R, -R, but it's an array that's supposed to take an integer and a string. It's like, okay, I'll go back and I will not do that because that's apparently wrong. And now it's clean. Um, one of the plugins fan has is a sprintf checker. So here, this function f, you pass in a string, and I'm printing out the string inside the printf. If I get it wrong, and I use d instead of s here, right? So this is for printing integers. Now fan comes up and says, wait a second, your format string is wrong. You're using a percent d, but you're passing in a string. That's not going to work, right? And for many of you, this may not seem all that cool because you can do this inside PHP Storm, right? M most of these things are available inside PHP Storm, but I'm in VI, right? I'm a VI person forever and ever. Plus, this is a scriptable open source solution that you can run as on like every commit, for example, to your repository. You can do a fan scan on this stuff out of band. All right, let's fix this one. Um, other silly things. Hey, I'm, I want to return an integer from my constructor. Wait, wait a second, you can't do that. It makes no sense to return an integer from a class constructor, and Fan will tell you that as well. All right? And all the various things you can think of to get wrong in here. Um, so let's say I'm going to say this function returns a string. I was like, Fan says, no, it doesn't, because I can tell that on the return, you're returning the output from printf, and Fan knows that printf returns an integer, so, I, so Fan knows you're returning an integer, and it's definitely not a string, so it's complaining, saying this, something is wrong here. Either you're returning the wrong thing, or your declaration is wrong. And all of these things are things that you wouldn't catch otherwise until you actually ran your code, and you get some kind of error on your production website. And sometimes they can be hard to catch or hard to figure out at that point. So that's what Fan does. Um, you can write your own plugins. At Etsy, I've written a number of different plugins for doing sort of Etsy-specific checks and turning off things that we don't want you to use. For example, there's a dollar dollar plugin I mean, th this is perfectly legal to do in PHP, dollar dollar var, but here we actually get two errors because I hadn't defined var. So if I say dollar var equals ABC, I'll be down to one error. 
But in this case, the plugin, the fan plugin dollar dollar complaints, say hey, dollar dollar variables are not allowed in this project. Right. So lots of cool stuff that you can do with fan. Am I doing five minutes? Okay. Um, there is a little video that you can watch online um, because, and it tells you a little bit on how to get started. Um, shows how to configure the config file with the various plugins that you want, and also how to start it in daemon mode, which is just daemonize with default TCP port, and off you go. Showing some of the same things I just showed you. All right, so I have five minutes. I want to leave a little bit of time for a couple of questions, because to me that's the most interesting. Um, the URLs are here for all the things that I talked about, but if you have a few questions, please don't be shy. No? And I will repeat them so everyone can hear. Actually, so the question is, are we thinking of adding a language feature due to some of these things that Fan does? So the problem with doing a lot of these things at runtime is that performance-wise, checking for contents of an array at runtime is very damaging to performance. It's the same reason that we don't have types on properties. Right now, all the type hints are on sort of the egress points. So when you're passing variables into a method, when you're returning stuff, it's easy for PHP to do a type check then. But, but if on every single variable assignment, you have to check, hey, is this allowed here? Is this type allowed in this array? Or are we allowed to change this property to an integer? If every single assignment had to go through these checks, performance would drop by a factor of 10. So we've had this very delicate balance of keeping max performance and doing as much tight checking as we can at runtime. And people come to me and say, hey, but HHVM does that. No, it doesn't. If you notice, a lot of the things that HHVM checks, it's only checked at the static analysis level. The actual runtime code doesn't do tight checks in most of the places. It's just that their static analyzer is kind of built in a little bit. It's more bundled with HHVM. Um, but it's actually not done as runtime checks for exactly the same reason. So no, a lot of these things that Fan can do, I don't see going into PHP itself for performance reasons. Not because we can't do it. Obviously we can do it because I did it in Fan. But Fan doesn't need to be quick. It takes a good five minutes to scan. We have over a million lines of PHP code at Etsy, and it's say, well, a little under five minutes now, but it takes like four minutes and something to scan the entire code base. I want to return Etsy request in 30 milliseconds. I don't have three seconds per file. Um, and, and to do that on every single request makes no sense either. Yeah. My top three frameworks, I have no idea. I'm a terrible PHP developer. I don't write PHP. PHP is not written in PHP. PHP is written in C. <laughs> so think about it, right? I, I, I'm the wrong person to ask PHP questions. <laughs> there's, there's another one, sorry. So we haven't, I'm still working on the 7.2 upgrade. I'm getting close. Um, the 7.0 to 7.1 upgrade was minimal. It was maybe three, four percent performance increase. The big jump was from five to seven. From seven zero, seven one, seven two, seven three, these are incremental. You'll see some, in, some performance increases depending on exactly which optimizations you are lucky enough to hit. If you hit a new one, a lot. You might see a big jump, but for the most part, you're going to see single-digit percentage increases across the seven line. 
until we get a JIT, perhaps in PHP 8, you're not going to see another big jump. So the question is, do we plan to add asynchronous operations in PHP? We do have some already. Like, you can do async stuff to MySQL. You can do async. You can do select on things, right? The, all the stream functions are asynchronous. So most of the things that you want to do asynchronously, you can already do them. Um, we're not going to add threads. But there are some, there is some work going on on perhaps something along those lines. Um, but it's not going to be like a full Java thread implementation where you can run a complete separate PHP interpreter and another thread. That's just not going to happen. And architecturally, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that because you already have the ability to basically send another request to the web server and, and start another completely separate thread if you wanted to do it that way. So there are some tricks, though, around asynchronous stuff. And there are some um, proposals. If you go to wiki.php.net, you can read some of the proposals on various asynchronous features. All right, I, th I can take one more, then I'm out of time. If there is one, quick, no? Okay, all done. Thank you very much. <laughs>